Hello everyone and welcome to this eCognition Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna have a look at an algorithm called Assign Class by Thematic Layer. And this algorithm is very helpful if you want to assign the classes that are stored in your thematic layer to your image objects within eCognition. And it's a very fast algorithm. It quickly assigns all the classes that you have stored in your thematic layers to an image object level. And I'm gonna have a few examples and afterwards you're gonna love it. Let's start right away with the project. I have here an aerial image, blue, green, red, and near bands, 60 centimeter spatial resolution. And you might have seen this data set before because I've used it for other videos. Mm, in this case, we have buildings as a vector layer in this project, as well as roads. And in the first step, that's always how I start a project. I do a vector-based segmentation. I did that already. If you don't know how to do this one, check out the eCognition Deconstructed video on vector-based segmentation of last month. And it results in image objects representing your vector layers. But now the question is how to classify these image objects, right? Maybe you already have a classification within your thematic layer and you just want to assign this classification that's stored in thematic layer to your image objects. We simply gonna use the assign class by thematic layer algorithm. And you also see in the process tree, I have a nice structure already for my rule set. I'm gonna insert a new child into the classification based on thematic layers process. So right click, insert child. And now I'm looking for the assign class by thematic layer algorithm. We now simply have to choose the thematic layer we're using and the column that we want to use to assign classes. So we're looking for the thematic layer building. So we first want to classify the buildings based on the information in the thematic layer. But I have no idea about the columns in this vector file. So let's first have a look at the attribute table. So I'm going to open the thematic layer attribute table and check the attributes of my vector layer buildings. I'm just gonna align the window so you see everything. And you also have to display the vector layer and then you see the attribute table. We have different columns here. Number is probably the ID. Then building HE is the building height, I guess. Um, building ID, another idea and height class. Well, that's probably the classification into different height classes. So let's simply use this column for classification, okay? So I'm auto-hiding this window and we go back into our process here and we'll change the thematic layer attribute to the column height class. For the class mode, you have three different settings. By default, it's set to skip if class does not exist. In our case, we do not have classes yet. So having this setting, it will only classify your image objects if the information in the thematic layer matches your class name. In our case, we do not have any classes, so if we execute this one, nothing should happen. Let's try that one. Wait for a second, and let's check if something has been classified. You see the class hierarchy is still empty, so we don't have classes, so I can tell you already nothing has been classified. But still, let's check the classification view, and you see Everything is transparent, everything is unclassified, and that's based on the settings of our assigned class by thematic layer algorithm. We can use different class modes, for example, this one. That's the second one, use default class, and that's gonna put, if there's information in this column, it's gonna put this into the class that you define down here. I'm just gonna call it building, so use default class, so it's gonna put everything into that class where it finds information in your thematic layer. Nice, so you see a result already. The objects have been classified based on the information of the thematic layer. So all image objects that are overlapping with the thematic layer are classified in this case into the class buildings because we use the class mode used for class. Let's go to the most interesting one, create new class. So it's simply gonna create new classes based on the information in the thematic layer in this column that we've chosen. 
and it's going to create in the class hierarchy these new classes that are defined in the column of the thematic layer. Okay, that looks good. So we've created new classes based on this algorithm and the information in the thematic layer in the attribute table. You can see the new classes on the right hand side in the class hierarchy window. I will fast forward a little bit because I'm changing the colors of the classes here, trying to give it a nice uh, color range. And I'm also adjusting the few so everything is where I want it to be. Back to normal speed again and you nicely see the different buildings have been classified based on the information of the thematic layer. So you have different heights. Uh, the purple one is the highest one above 15 meters or higher than 50 meters. Dark red is 10 to 15 meters and so on. Um, and that's solely based on the information in the thematic layer. I will fast forward again because I'm giving my class hierarchy a nice structure and sort it correctly. If you don't know how to do this, I recommend you to go to LinkedIn and join our eCognition group. Because in this group we are posting each week uh, tips and tricks about eCognition. We call it the weekly eCognition brainwave. And we also have a brainwave regarding the class hierarchy and the sorting of the classes. So I sorted the classes based on the height and also embedded these classes into the parent class buildings. So I can unfold this class and see the colorful discrimination of the classification. I also can simply close it and only the color of the parent class, in this case buildings, is displayed. Let's have a look if we can classify the roads as well. So you saw at the beginning we have the image objects already. Now we can have to know what information is stored in the thematic layer. So I'm also gonna check the thematic layer, the attribute table of the roads to know what we can classify. If we check the attribute table once more, now for the roads instead of the buildings, you see all these columns, bridge, tunnel, max speed. I have no idea. Let's simply go maybe for the code. That might be a road code for different road types, street types. So let's just go for this column and classify the image objects based on this information. So we go into the design class by thematic layer algorithm, choose code as thematic layer attribute, create new class. And I set as class filter unclassified so we are not overwriting our classes. They might overlap, but therefore I'm just gonna go and classify the unclassified image objects. The idea is that we do not want to reclassify our already classified image objects. And you see we've created tons of different classes based on this column information. I'm going to create another class called roads and put all these new classes into this class road. I'm going to fast forward again. And now let's check if the classification worked. Let's zoom in into the road. So you see everything is yellow. That looks good. These image objects that were cut out by the thematic layer are also classified. And if we unfold the road class, you see all these subclasses that we've classified based on the attribute table. I have actually no idea what these numbers mean, but uh, maybe you have an idea. You also see that the bridge here is misclassified, but that's based on the thematic layer, so the thematic layer is wrong. You could write a rule set to improve these classifications and update the thematic layer, just to give you some ideas you could spend your evening good the only thing left to say is thank you for watching thank you for your interest i hope you learned something new and i'm almost 100 percent sure that you're gonna use this algorithm in your next rule set so good luck enjoy and hear next time <laughs>